because uh, I have been well, campaigning for uh, cystic fibrosis patients' rights in Ireland for the past seven years now. Um, I started when I was 18 and I am 25 on Thursday. <laughs> so uh, I, I have a lot to say about, uh, about uh, how people with CF are treated in this country, but really what tonight um, has made me think of is uh, fate and uh, faith, actually. Um, it's, it's kind of funny. My aha moment was uh, personally wow, when I was 18, and I've had cystic fibrosis, which is a chronic uh, illness that affects the lungs and digestive system and many other organs of the body um, since I was born. And there is no cure for it currently. Uh, people with it usually um, live into their late 20s, early 30s, and um, they need lung transplants then to survive. Um, it's not always possible to get one in this country, so we've been working on that for the past seven years. Um, improvements have been made, but uh, there's a long, long way to go. Um, so, uh, basically, people with CF need treatment throughout their lives, in hospital and out of hospital, and, um, it's, you know, you can go to school and have whatever sort of life you choose to have, and, um, you know, it's entirely possible to live the life that you want. Um, but uh, the problem really is, is to have a system, a health system that supports that as well and that gives you access to care when you need it. Um, that prolongs your life and makes you live as long as you possibly can. Um, when I was 18, I moved over to St. Vincent's Hospital in Dublin, which is the adult centre for CF care. Um, I went into a ward uh, where there were five other patients and the ward was actually an orthopaedic ward, so there were no special uh, sort of nurses specially trained in CF or anybody who knew anything about my illness that I had lived with for 18 years, so I knew quite a lot about it. Um, and it, it was shocking and it was disturbing and it was like a, a culture shock because uh, I was so informed and they were not. Um, there was a designated ward for CF, but it was actually, in fact, a respiratory ward where only two patients with CF but there was only spaces for two patients with CF at any given time. And there were over 300 people with CF who attended the hospital and 40 patients in at any given time. So if you just think about that, the danger of being in a ward where someone doesn't know anything about CF is that, you know, you're not going to get the treatment that you need. And also, by staying in rooms with patients who have any type of other illness, particularly cold or infectious illnesses, um, is that if you get them, they those uh, that bacteria that they have or even through sharing bathrooms and things like that um, can be detrimental to your health so much so that um, basically you know it can lead to a very bad bad situation and uh, even death so it's a it's a really serious situation and um, when I was 18 I was in this orthopedic ward and uh, four of the people in the ward with me uh, couldn't actually speak, they were all so unwell, but only one woman in the ward uh, who had just come back from surgery could talk. And uh, her daughter happened to write for the Irish Times. And uh, we had a conversation one day about the way the services were, and you know, I really wanted to do something about it, but I didn't know what to do. And a few people had suggested writing a letter to the paper or whatever, and uh, I kind of thought, well, what, what will that do? Will it do anything? And uh, there was a section in the paper called the Teen Times where teenagers could talk about issues that affected them. And uh, they, you know, they, Roisin Ingle actually was a journalist and she said, why don't you write for, for the Teen Times? So I, I decided to do that. Um, and that was the, the first sort of moment of activism for me. And I didn't really think of it as activism at the time. I didn't think of it as... Um, an aha moment per se until about two weeks later uh, when I had spent uh, a week and a half in the actual respiratory ward for people with CF are treated. Gosh, this is, I'm not talking very fast at all. <laughs> okay, anyway, so basically I, I made friends with a girl with CF who was 24, which is the age I am now, and uh, she was an art student in NCID and she uh, passed away within three weeks of us knowing each other. Um, she was an incredible woman and that's how I started campaigning. Um, it's been seven years now and services have improved throughout the country but uh, there's a lot to do and the most incredible thing that I've learned in the past uh, seven years is the 
way that people can rally together and the way the communities um, can really make a difference uh, in society. And, and I think the thing my father used to tell me as a kid was that anything is possible and I really, really believe that. I think that if you're passionate and if you really go for what you believe in and do not listen to people who tell you you can't do it, that you can do it. And I think that um, there is hope everywhere. And I think my favourite my favorite quote is uh, Emily Dickinson's Hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul that sings the <laughs> things that you at the words and never stops at all and I really believe that and I think that there's always something to be hopeful for and that you can do anything and um, thank you for having me here. <laughs>